Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be available for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, whoever you think might be interested in any of the topics um, we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, so similar to your state library. So we provide services and training and resources and grants to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies, um, anything and everything. Really, the, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries, uh, something cool libraries are doing, some, uh, we do book reviews, mini um, training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we sometimes bring in guest speakers to talk on, um, on Encompass Live. We also have library commission staff that do presentations for us. And today, that's what we have. Uh, with me today is Sally Snyder. Good morning, Sally. Hello. <laughs> and she is the um, our the Nebraska Library Commission's coordinator of children and young adult library services. And today she's going to talk to us about the um, best new children's books of 2023 titles that she's encountered over the past year. Um, and for those of you who, are, who attend this show regularly or annually, I guess would be even thing. Um, this is the first of three sessions that Sally usually does for us during the end of the year. November, December, January time period. Um, best new children's books today. Best new teen reads of 2023 will be on January 24th, 2024. If you want to look forward to that and register for that, it's on our calendar. And on December 20th, next month, she'll be back um, with us again to talk about summer reading program 2024 and books that you might want to um, look into for the new um, theme for the year of 2024, Adventure Begins at Your Library. So those are her three regular ones that um, she does at the end of the year, and they're all on our schedule now. So I will just hand it over to you um, now, Sally, to tell us about um, tell us what you have for us today. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. First, I wanted to show you where my book list is so that um, you can see the whole list at your convenience. If you go to our webpage, which is nlc.nebraska.gov, this is what it looks like. And you go up to search our site and type in the word handout it should pop up there we go handouts and then it says library commission handouts these are all handouts that i've created because i wanted to have a convenient place to put them and i've told other people you can use this if you want to but everybody leaves it alone i guess they just think it's my my kingdom or something but that, that's okay <laughs> so you see this list of handouts and here it says 2023 encompass live best new children's books and you click there and there's your list which you can then download or print or whatever you want to do so this is um all the titles i'll talk about today with the uh, information for ordering or um, just jotting down yes no um, must have whatever you need to say is great and that's the way to get to it so now i'm going to call up my yeah. And so if you if anyone wants to right now, you can go right to our website just like she did and you can get that PDF right away. That's right there live on our website for you. Good so point. go ahead and grab that. And just because I'm there, I'm not blocking anybody else from getting to it at the same time. As many people as want to can get there. So now I'll go to to my list, my slideshow. And <clears throat> first I want to say I do have a blurb sheet because if I don't, I'll take three hours to talk about these books and Krista won't let me take that long. <laughs> Wisely so. A little over is okay, but yeah. <laughs> Not that long. And so these have my these pertinent points I want to be sure I make. So I'll, I'll be reading from the list more than just mm -hmm. quick 
Yeah. I also mentioned this slide presentation will also be available to you afterwards um, when I put up the show recording as well. So you'll have her list that lists all the titles, the slideshow, which is the um, book covers, and a link to the recording um, afterwards. Right. Go so ahead. Take it away. I usually try to begin saying these are books that I have encountered, as um, Krista said. So there are probably wonderful books out there that I just never got to see. I, we get book, review books from some publishers here at the Library Commission that I look through. I always look at the public library for some things that they have that I haven't gotten because some publishers don't send me very much. And then I also look on the internet for books that people are talking about, books that are um, people are getting excited about so I can see about getting a copy of a book too. So if your favorite book is not on my list, I probably didn't encounter it. So I apologize. The other thing is I divided this up into categories. So I start with picture books. That's a pretty general category, but um, I do say things towards the end, books for you know grades like two to five. And we all know that kids read at their own level. And a, a kid in second grade might be reading a book that we would think it was at a fourth grade level, and that's that's fine. I put these books in these general categories to give you an idea of where I see those books falling in the grade level spectrum. But you know the kids in your community much better than I do, and you'll know who might be interested in a title that that um, others might think is either too hard or too easy for them. So that's why you're there, to be the librarian. So we'll start with picture books. And the first book is 20 Questions. Some of the questions have answers in the illustration. Others have no answer. Or listeners can give an answer and say why they think that is the answer. There are, these are questions to make someone think and ponder the possibilities. And they could lead to stories about people in the illustrations if you want to go that way. It really has lots of things going on in this book. And then you could ask the, the listeners, what other questions could you ask? This just came the other day. I was so excited to get a hold of it because I've heard lots of talk about this. Hmm. It's a picture book, yes, but it's about a superhero type guy. Bobby Beacon has the power of light and fire. His first day at the Academy of Kids with Awesome Abilities does not go well, and he ends up in the principal's office because his frustration with his teacher ended with him melting his chair. The principal threatens him with uh, the Institute for Supervillains, kind of like a, you could go to, you could end up going to uh, jail if you're not being good, or go to the Institute of Supervillains. Oh, that's not a good way to get started. A new teacher, Miss Brooklyn, shares calming methods and values the students in her class, and she takes Bobby Beacon into her class and helps him learn how to control these things that that are part of his life. Kirkus says, Barnes tells an engaging story while skillfully conveying the idea that young people can flourish with guidance from empathetic educators. Every summer, Nora visits her grandmother in the Philippines. This summer is the first time she can help at her grandma's Sorry Sorry store. It has all kinds of things. Nora stocks the shelves, dusts, and source items, but a heat wave comes and it stays and people are not coming into the store. One day they go outside for fresh air and shade of the mango tree, and Nora sees the mangoes are ripe and they can make ice candy. Yum. Soon they are selling plenty at the Sorry Sorry store and everyone enjoys it. This is problem solving and sharing, and it includes a recipe on the back end paper. So if you want to make some, some ice candy yourself, you can give it a try. A, nor a normal leopard tortoise, her name is Barbara Hendricks. She has an enthusiastic owner who signs Barbara up for a fun race and now a week of training. Lorraine believes that Barbara can do it and so Barbara trains. The day of the race, her competition is a snail, a slug, a slow loris, and some others, and Barbara tries her hardest. There are delightful illustrations that show a tortoise with a quite expressive face. And also another fun thing is that after Barbara wins, a hare arrives and challenges her to another race, Shades of Aesop. 
Melvina has been frightened of clocks ticking, dogs, spiders, creaking floorboards, and more. But now she has a new house and everything will be safe and wonderful. And it is until she goes to bed. Then she hears thumping and bumping downstairs. Going down, she sees lots of creatures, scary creatures, too scary. Back in bed, there's a knock at the door and the skeleton invites her to rejoin the housewarming party. They didn't mean to scare her. With her new friends, she knows she will always be safe and happy. So here's a, a Halloween or a, a scary story time of year with that not being too scary. About the library fish. The library fish loves to hear Mr. Hughes read books aloud at story time. One day he read, dog loves to read. Fish learned. It took a lot of time and patience and practice, but after some time, the dog began to read all by himself and she is inspired. She makes a plan. Every night, first learning the alphabet, then how to put letters together for short words, she practiced and practiced. And sometimes the illustrations helped her figure out the words. Finally, she could read an entire book by herself. And she first thing she thought she should do is share with a friend what she had learned. This is very silly. The book warns the reader or listener not to read him and offers suggestions of other things they could do instead. When the reader doesn't leave, he announces, there's no story time today. The other books love story time and hold one right in the kid's bedroom. Feeling a bit left out, the cranky book offers the opportunity to read him by saying, I might be feeling a teeny tiny bit less cranky right now. He pushes the other books out of the way and thanks the reader for sticking with him. But the reader has to leave and the book is hurt, thinking they were friends. Here come the other books responding to the word friends. Silly and funny, listeners will enjoy the cranky book attitude. Everybody's been cranky now and then, right? A girl and her dog find a free bent up yellow umbrella in a junk store. It has been raining for days and everyone is down about it. They happily take the umbrella and run down the sidewalk, unknowingly spreading bits of the tattered umbrella along the way. The next morning, the tatters have transformed into yellow umbrellas. The girl and the dog pull and dig them up to share with everyone. The yellow is so infectious, soon the clouds disappear and the sun comes out and it's a beautiful day. It's a this is a companion book to her, I Was Born a Baby, has clever rhyming text which tells where some animals live on the bay, a ranch, a riverbed. But each time one animal claims a place that more share of the text is, are you for sure? I had no clue. That would be like a nest or a burrow, a den, a branch. Then a two page spread where three other animals also claim that place. It's an introduction to the zaniness of English and the animal world. The end papers provide the names of all the animals, although they have a porcupine as a den dweller, but he is seen in a, in a hole in the tree stating, I live in a tree trunk. That's the first sentence of the book. So that's a little confusing. I, maybe they live both places and that's okay, but I thought that was a little weird. Otherwise, it is very cute and fun. <laughs> All that it holds. Some things in the world are small, like pebbles and flowers. Some things are big, like the sea and the sun. And a quote from the book is, most things are in between, like you and me. Everything is in the world. Another book from Jory John. The Big Cheese is a wheel of cheddar, and he spends all his time touting his successes at everything. But one day, a wedge of brie comes to town. Wedge is quiet and shy. The all-day cheese cathon was being held again during the summer. The big cheese had won everything for the past six years. This time, Wedge won the competition after competition. From a foot race to hat making to bread buttering and more, Wedge won them all. At first, the big cheese is devastated. Then he realizes he's ever that he had been missing a lot. He couldn't support his friends as they compete. There was no more worrying about losing because he'd already lost and trying new things without worrying about a poor performance because people didn't expect him to win everything. He has a new outlook on the world. Elijah loves his grandma, Eleanor, listening to her stories and hearing the wonderful words she knows. Never forget Eleanor, it's what everyone calls her. 
since she remembers friends, neighbors, and stories. But lately she has been forgetting some little things and Elijah has noticed. One day she is not at home for the story Saturday story session. No one knows where she is. Elijah thinks hard and comes up with a plan to help her find her way home. It's just touching and heartfelt. It's a beautiful story of love, kindness, and eventual loss. This is a wordless book. A boy and his mother walk through their neighborhood, and when they return home, they take some flowers to the new neighbors as a welcome. The new neighbors, we see a mother and a daughter, are immigrants and speak Arabic. The boy is deaf, but he and the girl find a way to communicate, sharing a cookie and paper with crayons. This is the third book in the series. The Digger and his friends once again demonstrate understanding and willingness to work with the needs of others. This time a caterpillar comes along and machines create a pile of leaves for it to eat and to keep it out of their way while they're working. Then it chooses to climb on Digger and make its cocoon on the bottom of his blade. Digger sits through all kinds of weather while the cocoon hangs from its blade. The other machines go on about their work. And finally, on a special two-page spread that you hold vertically, all the machines see and celebrate the beautiful butterfly. Elijah Pierce was a skilled and well-respected folk artist as well as a barber, and this is a fictional story to introduce him to younger readers. A boy and his father walk into Mr. Pierce's barber shop to get the boy a haircut. You gotta meet Mr. Pierce, says the father. Inside there were wood carvings all over, laughter and stories entertained all there. After the haircut, Mr. Pierce says, everything I carve, I want it to tell some kind of story. And then he shows them around the rest of the building talking about the different pieces on display. He encourages the boy in pursuit of his part as they leave. Some of them are represented in the book and two pages at the back of the book show which ones they are and are a photograph of the actual carving. Oh, <laughs> this is just too cute. Turtle is stuck on his back. Duck, kangaroo, and armadillo each offer a suggestion that always works for them, but Turtle is still stuck. Opossum lays on her back next to him so he isn't alone anymore. They have some conversations. Then they laugh so much after Opossum says, but, that the turtle turns over. They celebrate and walk away together. This is a great example of offering support even if there is nothing else you can do for someone. A little mouse is shocked to learn that on the night before Christmas, not even a mouse was stirring. Well, he certainly is going to stir. This Christmas Eve, he squeaked and eked. He crunched all the cookies. The cats told him to go to bed, but it was hard to wait until morning. He couldn't go to sleep, so he jumped in the train going full steam up the chimney and crashed into Santa. Santa has a special book for him, so he goes to bed, and then he doesn't want to wake up in the morning. So that's a, a kid for you. And I just wanted to point out that the illustrator is a, lives in Omaha, so kind of nice to support local uh, book producers. This is a look at how we are all human. Each section begins with you are, and then it has something to follow it up with, like a living thing or someone's child and a friend. It goes on with descriptions of how you are the name the thing. For example, you are under construction. You are a work in progress. You are growing, learning, and changing every day. School Library Journal says this delightful primer on being human is a mix of facts, speculation, and advice which is not to be missed. This is book four of the Vamo series and it continues in the same vein as the first books. There's lots to look at, lots going on, and labels of items in English and Spanish. This time Little Lobo and his friends visit the library's book festival and embrace all it has to offer. A costume contest, face painting, special guests, craft activities, and more. And School Library Journal says, Every library needs this book. It's a wonderful reminder of why libraries matter. A girl and her parents are overwhelmed by the four ants who arrive and take over everything. They are loving, but loud, meddlesome, and they take over the girl's room. The family takes them to see the sights, like the quilt museum, and they, are, and they overwhelm there too. Finally, they must leave and the house is quiet again. Oh, wait a minute, what's that? Sound coming over the hill is the uncles. Oh no. 
Do you suppose Adam Rex had some meddlesome ants? Possibly. The upbeat main character has the teligo, patches of skin that have lost their pigment. She calls these patches her spots and beauty marks. Others call them patches, dots, and blotches. The main character sincerely loves her spots and talks about how she was created special. A positive look at a physical feature some might consider a blemish. But Mama says with love, the teligo makes you, you. And the author also has this condition. A contented mouse is surprised by a smaller mouse who is looking for a story. After all, isn't this a book? The sad truth comes out. The larger mouse, mouse ate the story and nothing is left. It was delicious. The larger mouse offers to make up a story for the smaller mouse, but it is hard to think with someone staring at you. They wait a while longer and then the bigger mouse ducks behind the gutter of the book in order to be alone to think. Finally, the larger mouse tells a story of a mouse looking for a story with a soft ending. The smaller mouse says it was just fine, but he likes a surprise ending. Just then a dragon pokes his head out of the book gutter, surprise. They both wanna hear the story again. This is based on Aesop's story, The Dog and His Reflection. And the author again uses the format as in his title, Mel Fell, when you turn the book on its side and open it upwards. Simon spots another dog with a bone, a better bone than his. After trying several tricks that the other dog knew too, Simon pounces. When he climbs out of the pond, he notices they both have lost their bones. He spots a better bone in the dirt and generously drops the bone in the pond saying, this is for you, thinking he has lost a bone, but found a friend. For each dinosaur, one side of the first two page spreads shows some scattered bones as an archeologist might find them. The other side shows footprints and a potential food source. The second two page spread shows both the bones put together and a simplified drawing of the actual animal as you see on the cover. Kids will love the challenge of looking at the pile of bones and the clues and seeing if they can figure out which dinosaur it is. I love this book. <laughs> Donkey lived with the other cats on the farm. He licked his fur, perched on fence posts, and pounced on leaves. But one day the farmer said, Donkey, you're acting like a cat. And he started to wonder, what if I'm not a cat? He couldn't sleep, so he crept out of the barn that night and endured cold and rain. The next night he heard scaredy cat whimpers. A fox was after a kitten. Donkey hissed and ran down the hill. Then he did something new for him. He turned and kicked out with his back legs scaring away the fox. The cats all agree Donkey is a cat, and he teaches them to kick out with their back legs too. This is about finding your place, family is everything, and doing your best. Just one little light can make a difference and offer hope. It's a positive approach, noting that while making a big difference is difficult, making a small difference is worthwhile, and it is enough to begin. That phrase is repeated in the book. It is about hope, and joining together. And the last book on this part is by Jane Yolen, a fictional story of one horseback librarian to give the sense of what many people did during the Great Depression. Mostly it was women who rode horses into the back areas of Kentucky and other states to deliver books for children who had no library to visit. This is a cheerful book showing some isolation, but it's really about the children's excitement to have a new book or two to read. And authors note at the back tells of the Pack Horse Library Project, that was a part of the WPA. Now let's look at some beginning readers. Pat and Scones, a dog, live with two witches, Miss Hattie and Miss Hildy. One day the witches go out, but one forgot her wand. Scones thinks it is a stick and he begins to play with it. Sticks knows it is a wand, but they both play with it, then fight over it, causing havoc in the house. Then the wand breaks and they both blame the other. When the witches return, both animals take the blame and apologize. Miss Hattie teases them, implying they were silly to believe the stick was a magic wand. Scones lifts the stick and turns her into a jar of peanut butter. He really knew it was a wand all the time. <laughs> Pete the Kitty loves to paint and draw and create with clay in art class, but today they are going outside to make art from nature. This seems weird to Pete. He slowly begins to put things in his bag, a leaf, a stick, a flower. They are cool, but they are not art to Pete. When he sees the flower crown that Callie made and the turtle Abby made, he thinks of something he can make. Nature art is fun. 
This time talks about how wind and water affect land. Dee Dee and her class help clean up the beach after a storm. Ranger Earl explains why the beach is so different. No tide pools or sand dunes, dunes due to erosion from the storm. It includes two experiments the kids can do in their science class. And the instructions are included, so you can do them with your kids too. As we know, Vivi is enthusiastic in her studies of science. This one's hilarious. The second book about Duck and Cluck. Duck thinks the bare white page behind him needs some color. Duck thinks pink is best, and Cluck thinks it should be orange. Here begins their efforts to con convince the other of the merits of their colors. Finally, they each fill in one side of the two-page spread, and then it rains on it. It is beautiful now. They roll up the page and give it to the gator who had exclaimed how much the color reminded him of watching the sunset with his mama. But now, the page is boring again. It needs color, but which color? Dot loves dots here, there, and everywhere. Today is her special day. She is five and she now has five spots. She looks for her friends to share her day, but she can't find it anywhere. Then she sees a splotchy dot on the ground. She follows the drippy dots to her friends and a birthday party for her. It's a good story about friendship and celebrating special days. And I know there's one library in Nebraska that celebrates Dot Day every year. And this book will be perfect for anyone who wants to celebrate Dot Day. Yeah, we did an Encompass Live about it a, a while ago, too, a few years ago, I remember. So there is a, um, an a recording in our archives about Dot Day. Oh, that's great. The first book of Gigi and Ojiji, it was just called Gigi and Ojiji, was a 2023 Geisel Honor book. This is book two, What's in a Name? Gigi's full name is Geraldine, and Hanako is her middle name. She finds out they call her Gigi because she couldn't say her name as a toddler. So Gigi is a baby name, and she tries to be more grown up, and she wants to be Geraldine. But then that's too hard. She doesn't answer to that. So then she tries Hanako, but neither name feels right. What should she try next? Second, or the third book, I should say, of the series, Gigi's favorite breakfast is peanut butter toast, but OGG does not like peanut butter. He prefers natto, a traditional Japanese food made using fermented soybeans. Mm. Gigi's mother loves it too. Can Gigi try it? Ugh, she doesn't care for it. These are, of course, if you've read See the Dog and See the Cat, this is book three. <clears throat> a ghost, the wind, and a fairy too small to see are the three things you cannot see in this continuation of the series. It maintains the fun and humor of the first two titles. A touch of silliness and absurdity are always welcome. <coughs> Elena, a purple elephant, is trying hard to ride her bicycle. A red bird is her friend and cheerleader, encouraging her to keep trying. There's limited text and large type for her fall. Ka bang! Ka plunk, ka rash, and finally she writes it. I need to mention that the book I Did It by Michael Emberley was the 2023 Geisel winner, and that had the same topic. So if you have that book already, you might not want this one, but I love the purple elephant riding the bike. This is the second book about Raina. Here, her friend Lila is getting a puppy, and Raina loves dogs until she meets the puppy Chico. He is big. He scares her, but she doesn't want to let Lila know. They soon work out their troubles and recognize that people have different things that make them uncomfortable. There's a four word Spanish glossary in the back of the book. Speaking of Spanish, Raul III, I always want to call this Taco Tuesday. It's Tacos Today is the title of the book. <laughs> I read that too. <laughs> that just sticks in our minds. Lunchtime rolls around for the students at the School of Lucha, and the students burst out of the door and head for the restaurants. Tacos is what they want, but they only have a few pennies. They go to Taco Plaza and put on a show of their luchador ace skills. The crowd loves them and showers them with money. Is there something I can do in this that, that would shower me with money, but I can't think what that would be. The taco sellers give them a free lunch since they drew in a crowd. What a day. This is the third book about Fish. Fish's mom tells him to eat his lunch, even though it is a worm and not cake like he wanted. Fish was getting ready to eat his worm when the worm said, don't eat me. 
It didn't take long for them to become friends. Fish must, must explain to his mom, I cannot eat worms. She is my friend. So mom invites them both to have, oh, cake for lunch. <laughs> this is an I can read comic, as you can see up at the top. Helping kids understand the way comics are read so that they can later read graphic novels. Mm -hmm. Some nonfiction picture books. This is a companion book to the author Alexander and the Illustrator Suite's 2019 title, How to Read a Book. The book is a poem, guiding, leading, suggesting ways to explore the world to find the words of the poem waiting for you. And the quote is from the book, close your eyes, open the window of your mind, and climb out like a seedling, reaching for tomorrow. <laughs> the book starts with, begin with the question, and it closes with, now show us what you found. And another quote from the book is, the words have been waiting to slide down your pencil. It is marvelous. We've been looking for how to do poetry. Biography of the woman called the godmother of rock and roll. Rosetta Tharp picked up a guitar as a little girl and was on her way playing gospel music, then adding in some boogie woogie. Soon people were trying to copy her sound. She is quoted in the back pages as saying, quote, all this new stuff they call rock and roll, why, I've been playing that for years now. <laughs> the book notes that prior to Europeans coming to America, men and women shared the responsibility of leadership. The Europeans convinced the native people that men should be the leaders. It was many years before this changed. Wilma Pearl Mankiller was born in 1945. She thought the leader should be the best person for the job, man or woman. This book gives a brief biography of her life, both as a child and as an adult. In 1983, she became the deputy chief of the Cherokee Nation and two years later was temporary chief after the former chief took on a new job. In 1987, she ran for chief, although some still did not want a woman leader. She was chief for 10 years and was always interested in helping the people. Oh, I love chocolate, so I had to read this book. <laughs> this oh, is a picture book biography of Milton Hershey. As a child, his family was poor and moved often. He rarely had a candy treat, and chocolate was for just the rich people. No, no poor child could afford chocolate. Leaving school <clears throat> at 14, he intentionally got fired from his first job. It was boring, and got a job washing dishes at Royer's Ice Cream Parlor and Garden. Soon, he was helping to make ice cream and other items. His dream was to have his own candy business. <clears throat> he started with caramels, and he soon had a successful business selling his caramels to stores in the U.S., and overseas. Then he began to work on milk chocolate. It took several years to accomplish, but he and his uh, employees came up with a process and a recipe so that they could produce chocolate bars to sell for five cents, so it would be more available to many, many more people. There are 34 poems divided into chapters titled Home, Street, and town. They convey a sense of comfort and wonder and a new approach to the town. It's a wonderful collection of be brief poems. And some of the poets are Walter de la Mer, Gary Soto, Charlotte Zolato, Naomi Shabab Nye, Nikki Grimes, Lois Lenski, and Langston Hughes with beautiful illustrations. Speaking of beautiful illustrations, the expected incredible illustrations highlight the author's approach to int introducing birds. Two-page spreads address topics such as beaks, feet, and feathers, or bird senses. Another is flight, and another is bird brain. This title contains information on how birds evolve, how their bodies function, habitats, and food sources. A table at the back of the book provides information on all the birds depicted in, depicted in the book. And speaking of local authors, this is by Carla Kettner, who owns the bookstore in Seward. This is a wonderful picture book biography of po poet Ted Kuzer, a touch of what he was like as a kid and how he became a writer and poet. He was the U.S. Poet Laureate from 2004 to 2006, and he won the 2005 Pulitzer Prize for Poetry. As poet Naomi Shihab Nye sorry, says on the back of the book, a tender book celebrating the beloved American poet Ted Kuzer. And this includes 18 different beasts, some you may have heard of and others you may not. Fascinating look at large animals that are no longer here. Each two-page spread contains a large, eye-catching illustration, some basic information, 
and an inset was a small little illustration of the size of the beast compared to a man. Also the scientific name, its weight, how long ago it became extinct, and where it once lived. And kids are fascinated by ancient and older beasts. I think they'll find some animals in here they've never heard of before. Wow. A young girl explores her family's history and learns of the significance of long hair to her culture. The author says, our hair is our memories, our source of strength. It carries energies and power. In the back matter, the author also says, I share my story with others so they can understand who we are and why our hair is celebrated for the strength, power, and resilience that it holds. Um, that says, this is a deeply moving and inspiring celebration of long hair and its significance in, in its cultures, all in a picture. The first black woman sworn in as Supreme Court Justice, Ketanji, attended public schools, <clears throat> then went to Harvard for her undergraduate degree and for law school. Her accomplishments are noted here. It includes an author's note with more information about her, a glossary, and a timeline. School Library Journal says it's an excellent choice for picture book biography collections. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Good basic information on the life of a great white shark. Each two page spread has two short paragraphs. One is in larger type with basic information. And the second is in smaller type with some additional information for readers, listeners with a longer attention span. Beautiful illustrations show the shark in her habitat and other sea creatures around her. Another book about birds, and you can kind of decide which one you want, the, the Jenkins book or this, this book. It also has a variety of birds using page headings such as where do birds live or water birds or feeding. One paragraph per bird explains that one portion of that bird's life in the wild. The author is Ho-Chunk Nation in Wisconsin and Sandy of Pueblo in New Mexico. Tells of her love of dance, how she first learned the jingle dance when she danced at powwows, and then she learned the fancy shawl, another dance of powwow. She loved dance so much that she also learned tap, ballet, and more. They all brought her joy. She states, dance will always be a part of me. So for those dancers and you're coming in your library, they will love reading about someone who loved dance so much they learned as many different kinds of dance as they could. It's just amazing to me. Some early chapter books. <clears throat> Remember Too Small Tola? This is similar by the same author. Anna Hibiscus and her extended family live in an enclosed compound in a big city in Nigeria. The big white house and lovely garden are home to her, her aunts, uncles, and cousins. In the first story, Anna and her mother, who is from Canada, and father and her younger twin brothers, double in trouble, go away to the beach on vacation, just the four of them, no, well, five of them. <laughs> it's nice there, but the twins keep getting into trouble and there are no ants to help take care of them. Little by little, the need for their extended family is felt and soon everyone is at the vacation house and then everything feels right. There are three other stories in the book. And the second book is Hooray for Anna Hibiscus. She loves to sing and her twin brothers love to hear her. Anna begins going to school and soon learns about the upcoming visit of the president of another country. To welcome her, the school must choose someone to sing and Anna Hibiscus is chosen. She is happy and nervous. When she is on the stage in front of so many people, she freezes. It isn't until she hears her little brothers calling to her to sing that she remembers her song. There are again, three other stories included. <clears throat> Based on the picture book, A Friend for Henry, this is book one of a new early chapter book series about him. Henry is on the autism spectrum, but this is only mentioned on the inside cover. Henry likes things to stay the same. Change is hard. When the teacher announces that share time will be on Thursday so they can have a parade on Friday, that is not right to Henry. Then the music teacher gave Henry a tambourine for the parade. Oh, it was too jangly for him. We have the parade. Henry is not happy and Samuel is not happy. Samuel is to lead the parade and he wear his brother's drum major hat, but he doesn't want to. Henry has an idea. There's positive representation, an understandable issue and a good solution. Black and white illustrations with blue tones throughout the book. This is the third book about crab and, and snail. They encounter an eel on the beach. It is 
evil eel who stinks snails and make him evil too. Now he is Sneevil. Crab does his best to counter evil eel and save snail, but he needs help. Thank goodness no at all gum comes by and goes for help. Who will triumph? Will the beach ever be safe again? This is silly fun for readers and it, it continues the story of the two best friends. Speaking of best friends, here are the first two books about Bear and Bird. Bear and Bird, The Picnic and Other Stories is book one and they are great friends. They both want their friend to be happy even if they don't always understand each other. In one story, Bear was late getting up and he didn't pack anything for their picnic because he was late, but he didn't tell Bird because he wanted her to be happy. Bird knew it, but she didn't tell Bear, Bear for the same reason. So they do make believe instead of uh, having a picnic. Silly and humorous with a touch of caring. These stories will enchant readers who will wish they had a friend like Bear or Bird. And there are four stories in each book. The stars and other stories. In the first story, Bear and Bird have had a fight about a spoon. They can't quite remember what the fight was about the spoon, but they each decide to begin looking for a new best friend and end up unknowingly sending messages to each other. When they discover this, they burst into laughter and agree to be best friends again. That's the best way to react to a fight. Otilla runs away looking for a better place to live. She finds a skull all by itself looking at her out of the window of an old abandoned house. He lets her in and she carries him as he gives her a tour. That evening, the skull tells her a headless skeleton comes every evening to try and find him. When the skeleton arrives, Otilla tricks it and it falls from the upper balcony. She pounds the bones into powder, burns them, and drops them in a bottomless pit. The skull invites her to stay. It's a bit scary and satisfying. The girl and the skull find each, find each other and keep each other company. At the back of the book, the author tells the story of how this book came to be because he read it in a story tale collection, but then he remembered it differently, and his story ends up different from the one that he'd actually read, which is kind of how stories happen. Shermie can irritate his older sister, but he does things, does like things calm and in order. Shake has come to spend the summer with his grandma, who lives next door. Shake is loud, bossy, and grabs things. Shermie hopes he will disappear. But as time goes by, they begin to get used to each other's quirks and preferences. It gets to the point that Shirby has trouble reading his book when Shake isn't there to interrupt him. And then it's time for Shake to go home. They both feel sad. It's a good friendship story that shows their different personalities and the choices they make. This is book three of the Book Buddies series. Dazzle never belonged to anyone before he was bought at a yard sale to be a book buddy in the public library. His wish was for a child and a home, but he's willing to give being loaned a try. New to town, Maya and her younger brother, Mateo, borrow Dazzle and Nugget to take home for two weeks. New potential friend, Isabel, daughter of their mom's new boss, is coming over to visit. What should be fun is not. Since Isabel wants everything her way. Finally, Maya tells her that sharing means everyone takes turns. Isabel is surprised and then realizes her mistake and apologizes. And soon they are having a good time. And when they return their book buddies to the library, Maya tells Dazzle, I love you, and he feels all warm inside. Rosie loves surfing in Austria, Australia while visiting her Aunt Hazel each summer, but this summer her aunt wants her to teach her cousin Flora, who has always been mean to her. Rosie hopes things will be different this time, but as soon as Flora arrives, the put-downs begin. Rosie holds in her anger and hurt feelings to teach Flora so she will know what to do and the etiquette of surfing, sharing the waves in the beach. As they work together, they begin to realize they are having fun and enjoying each other's company. After a tip, they apologize. The next day, they surf again and encounter a dangerous rookie surfer who doesn't know and doesn't follow surf etiquette. Soon, Ann Hazel is giving him some guidance. I think the dealing with the, the misunderstanding between the two is a great lesson in this story. And also information about surf etiquette. I hadn't really thought about that before. This is Judy Moody and Friends number 14. So that series has been going for a while. Judy and Stink's friend Izzy has dogs on her mind. She keeps asking, but so far no dog for her. She does have a goldfish and a tarantula and enjoys spending time with her friend's iguana, but none of them are cuddly. Judy and Stink and Izzy try to teach the goldfish and then the tarantula some tricks, but neither will respond. They are not dogs. 
Izzy's mom and dad live in different homes, and her mom says the apartment is too small for a dog. Her dad says, we'll see, which her brother tells her means no. Then Izzy's dad quietly asks Judy and Steve to help him with a secret, a surprise for Izzy. Maybe there is a dog in her future. I love these books. This is the second one. It's a sequel to Mango's Mischief and Tales of Friendship from 2018. There are four more puzzle tales of wisdom from Prince Vera and his best friend, Suku. Some of the stories may be familiar to adults, but will intrigue those new to the logic used by the prince. For example, in one story, the two must say what the punishment will be for the individual who pulled the Raja's beard. Now they happen to know that his new granddaughter is the one who pulled his beard and they know that death, which would be like the usual, the usual uh, punishment is not the right thing to answer. So they come, come around to finding a tricky way to get him to agree to the fact that this was not really a crime. The author notes that she is retelling these tales from the story she heard as a child, the folklore tales of India and Persia. Mm -hmm. This is the second book about Bert the Beetle. He is a 10-lined June beetle. Here, Bert has decided to find a new place to live. After all, covering up with a leaf is really rather plain. The reader learns where lots of different insects live in this basic overview with plenty of humor. At the back of the book are some insect builder facts that may be of interest to the readers as well. And Bert is a quite friendly and happy beetle. Another little bit scary book, Freddie's grandfather was a founding member, member of the Society of Paranorma, Paranormal, Invisible, and Restless Imps and Terrors, which and is which is spirit, a very batch of very elite ghosts. Membership has been closed for years since humans use science to explain away anything ghosts do to scare them. Now Freddie has a chance to join the organization. All he has to do is scare a particular human family who believe in science. Freddie is ready for the opportunity. <clears throat> but all his tricks are explained away. What else can he do to get enough fear from them to set off the fear monitor Spirit has put in their house? And then he comes up with one more idea. This is a full color graphic novel that contains five stories about best friends, Gnome and Rat. Most mm -hmm. of the stories focus on Gnome's hat or hats in general, because Gnome really cares about hats. <laughs> The bird would not be able to solve a problem at a moment's notice. Rat is a good friend to know. Humorous, somewhat silly at times, readers will enjoy the situations that come up in the stories. They look a lot alike, but they are not the same. They are best friends, but now Caterpillar is hanging from a tree and forming, forming a cocoon. Worm is steadfast and gets a leaf to protect Caterpillar from the rain and visits with him. What will happen when Caterpillar leaves the cocoon? Will they still be friends? And this is a ready-to-read graphics book, which is similar to the I Can Read comics to help kids uh, learn how comics and, and graphic novels are read. And we'll have some fiction for grades two to five or so, like I said, the generalization. <clears throat> Zeke Stalls is 12, it's summer after fifth grade, and he spends a lot of time finding ways to get into trouble. He doesn't want to stress his mom, but his ideas carry him away. Now he is one of five contestants for the title of the greatest kid in the world. He has no idea how he ended up on this list. No one has spoken up and said they nominated him or anything. It's just one of five. He has four days of being videoed, being himself, to win the contest, a trip to Hawaii and $10,000. That would help his mom so much. His father passed away three years ago. What would a great kid do? This stymies him, and he makes some extreme choices, some bad choices. Still, his younger brother is on his side, and sometimes his older sister, too. Can he win? Should he win? Five years after publication of the second book in the series comes book three. Roz and the animals on the island are threatened by an oncoming disaster, something called the poison tide. When it arrives, everything in, in that area of the ocean is killed. Plants, animals, everything. The island is all right, but it is overloaded with animals who usually come and go, like geese and other birds, sea otters, and more. Roz swims away through the poison tide to find what is causing it and ends it. She encounters many kinds of life, making friends along the way, and eventually finds the cause. Readers will be engaged as the book contains some humor, as well as a desperate need for a clean ocean. And it includes an author's note at the back. 
And will there be more wild robot books? I don't know. This is fascinating. I just love this book. A picture book for older readers. It is a fascinating look at art inspired by 10 word stories that enchant and inspire. 20 sentences, a different artist for each one, starting with, my splintered oars are lost as my boat speeds onward. Later on in the book, the Venus flytrap keeps edging closer to grandma's favorite chair. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> mm. What illustration would you draw for that? Interesting. It includes two challenges at the back of the book. The first one is to have readers create their own art inspired by the 10 word story. Another op option is to have readers write an expansion of the story. What brought things to this point? or what will happen next. Or they can write their own 10 word tiny tale, which is kind of a challenge too, because it is a fascinating book and the art is beautiful. And like I said, each, each different one has a different artist. So really a lot going on. <clears throat> Five carefully made puppets are found in the trunk waiting for a story to begin. They end up with a family that has two daughters and the older daughter is writing a story for them. The younger daughter, daughter loses a couple of the puppets, but they are found in time for the show. After it is performed, the puppets wonder what is next for them when the maid sweeps them up and takes them with her as she leaves to perform more stories. It's a quiet, winsome, winsome story of puppets hoping and waiting to fulfill their purpose. By Kate Camillo, of course. Lisco is 12 and she's Ogdue. She had an unsettling encounter with a stranger in Winnipeg where she and her aunt live. They agreed it would be good for her to spend the summer with her grandmother and her cousins on the reservation. Misko is also hoping to find out what happened to her mother who disappeared when she was four. No one has heard from her since. She meets a horse while wandering near her grandmother's home and soon learns that the white boy and his father are breaking him in a cruel way. She bonds with a horse, names him Mistadim, and tries to convince the boy, Thomas, to use a gentler way with him. As the summer progresses, she reconnects with her Ojibwe roots, enjoys her grandmother and cousins, and also learns that she and Thomas are not that far apart on how to train the, the horse. And this book did receive a star view, review from Kirkus. Nice. This is a full color graphic novel. Avery, 11, is the second oldest of seven children in the Loving Lee family, and she is beginning to feel squished by her siblings. When her older brother is given a room of his, of his own, and her room of two is becoming a room of three. Younger brother Max is moving in with Avery and her sister Pearl. She prepares a list of the reasons she should have her own room, but to no avail. Avery loves her family. She just gets a bit embarrassed and frustrated by them. So she decides to earn money in order to have a room built for her in the basement. Walking dogs and selling lemonade do not work out well. Then she learns the family may be moving to Oregon for her mother's new job, and a room of her own is not even an issue anymore. She doesn't want to move away from her friends and all she knows. There is plenty going on and readers will relate to Avery's ups, ups and downs. Another full color graphic novel. This is fiction based on a true story of his life, the author's life. First day of middle school, sixth grade, Rex is still short, no growth spurt yet. His best friend abandons him for the popular kids and it is noticed that he is on the free lunch list. Now he can't see to open his locker or read the board in class. He needs glasses. Great. His mom, Mexican American, and his white stepfather who stutters are loving to each other and to the family, but they are bare, barely making enough money to make ends meet for the family. So he ends up with an ugly cheap frames for his glasses. When he tells his troubles to his abuela, she fills him in on her child in Mexico, and that makes him rethink about his situation because she had a rough time. With friends, with new friends, a supportive family, and the realization that it is all right to ask for help when needed, Rex is finally able to stand up to his main bully and let him know that what he says doesn't matter. Everyone knows something weird is going on at the nearby Sinclair Research Lab, but no one knows any details. Korean American Luke, 11, and his dog Haru learn some terrible truths about the place, told from Luke, Haru and a stray cat, Penny's points of view. The worst is revealed when Haru ends up in the research lab and is experimented on. He loses himself for a while, but stray cat Penny helps him escape and regain his sense of self. 
three other dogs became thoughtless zombie dogs and have spread the disease to some workers. Haru uses his love for Luke and Luke's family to keep him centered. He does, he does have weird eyes and amazing strength, but he is not a threat. The family knows they must leave Virginia and they get out just as the borders are closed. This contains cruelty to animals, some racism, but it also has a positive family situation with the two parents at home who love their son. Dogs, yike. This is a full color graphic novel as well. Anya is now the new moth keeper, walking the, wake, walking the next few nights with the former moth keeper. It is a lonely job with one lantern and the luminous moths in the dark desert. The moths are needed for the one day a year the special tree meets them. That is when their night flower blooms and the night village meets the magic pollen of the tree. She is determined to do a good job, but life in the night village is different and she longs to experience some time in the light and the sun. One night, the former moth keeper takes the moth so Anya can rest, but she creeps away during the day to visit a village that is awake to experience what she thought she was missing. She enjoys that and she was back to take the moths for that night, but she falls asleep and loses the moths. She searches and finds them with some help, but can they get home in time for the night flowers? It's hilarious. This book it's, you'll, you'll think of Matilda by Rod Dahl right away when you're reading this because her life is pretty much like that. Um, Leva wonders, what are people for? And her mother says, fame. Her mother is the mayor of Nutsmore. Money, says her dad, he's the town treasurer. But in her walks around town, Leva happens upon a boy wearing a hazmat suit and he has a badger. These two plus the two librarians at the public library will help Leva find her place in this world and help her make a difference in the town. Like, like I said, it's hilarious and uh, you'll have a good feeling at the end of the story. This is a hard one based on the author's experiences in 1980 along with some other uh, survivor stories. This is a fictional account. As a child, Tao Pam loved soccer and cricket fighting. When he was 11, his parents arranged for his older brother to escape being conscripted into the communist army by buying passage for him on a boat to leave the country. Tao knew his trip would be soon, and it was. A rather small boat with too many people in an unsure future as they start their journey away from Vietnam, hoping to land somewhere safe. The first pirates to find them take everything. Soon another pirate ship comes along, sees they have nothing, and leaves them with some food and water. Tao one day sneaks aboard a friendly pirate ship, thinking they are kind and will help him. They do, and eventually, after another ship change, he arrives at a refugee camp in the Philippines. This survival story will capture readers' attention and give a sense of the hunger and fear felt by the Vietnamese boat people. Speaking of hilarious, your pal Fred, book two, Low Power. Fred is continuing to help people get along, but his power is low since the clouds of pollution block the sun. His only hope is to visit the city of Suntop where he will be able to recharge. But once he gets there, he has to solve, solve the mystery of the garbage-like beings who seem to be stealing things from the city. Will Fred persevere, find the thieves, and power up? There's plenty of humor in Fred's philosophy. If everyone could learn to make friends, the whole wor world would be much happier. After all, Fred was programmed to help people make friends. He does not quit. <laughs> He's a robot type toy, yes. so he can't quit. This is a fun story that takes place in a fictional airport. Everybody's been grounded due to the thunderstorms outside the windows, as you can see there. While they're there, um, oh, it's, um, all the people who are in the story, they are heading home after attending Mona, Muslims of North America Conference. And um, yeah, one of the children enlists the help of the other four to find the cat that got out of its cage in the airport itself and is running, you see his tail right there. It's running around and it's been loose for a week and she's worried about his health and safety. So she gets the other kids to help and they all get in trouble. And along the way, they become friends and they discover that there are many ways to be Muslim. They need to be honest with each other and their parents. They support each other and they realize that people are the most important thing. This is an awesome book too. Hercules and his older brother Achilles lost their parents a year and a half ago in a car accident. Achilles came home to take care of Hercules. 
Now Hercules is beginning seventh grade and is assigned by his teacher, Lieutenant Colonel Hupfer, a retired Marine, a year long, 150 word essay on each of the mythological Hercules' 12 labors, as they might happen in the current day world, as they relate to Hercules Beale. Schmidt cleverly finds tasks Hercules can refer to that somewhat mirror the myths. And there are plenty of other challenges for him and his brothers to face. But over time, things do begin to improve. It is quirky, satisfying, and humorous, all things one expect from Gary Schmidt. Winna is 10, and her younger sister, she and her younger sister Tupelo are living with their grandparents while their mom is in the hospital. They're very worried about their mom. Tupelo accidentally breaks Winna's glasses, and her grandfather loans her a pair that once belonged to her great aunt Estelle. They are magic. When Winna puts them on, everything is clearer, and she sees more details. Quite a difference. Then she sees a ghostly figure and learns it is her great aunt Estelle. They cannot talk, but when Winna breathes on the glasses, Estelle can write in the fog. And this is how she learns about a family secret and how a vow made by her great great grandmother Winona is a reason for her family's early deaths and bad health. Can Winna solve the mystery of a stolen baby to save her mother? Officer Clossum is a full color graphic novel. He is a lobster and he is a well respected police officer under the sea. His sidekick is also his badge, Tariana who Officer Clossum can throw to foil dastardly deeds, and she can fly through the water herself. Kelpie's, the shop with the famous cupcakes, is missing the entire building. This is unheard of. Officer Clossum and Stariana are on the case. Plus, people keep calling the police station saying they are seeing a huge shark in the area. There hasn't been a shark around for ages. Lots of action and humor. Readers will cheer for Officer Clossum. Excuse me just a minute. Sure. I just want to jump, let everyone know it is, um, it's a little after 11 o'clock. Yes, officially our show goes 10 to 11. I'm not sure how many more uh, books you have left on your list there, Sally. Um, okay, but we'll go as long as it takes for Sally to get through all of her um, titles. She has everything she has on her list today. Um, as you said, the beginning, the full list is on our website if you want to go look at it, and these slides will be available, and the recording will be available um, afterwards as well. But if you need to um, jump off because you only, you know, scheduled an hour of your time for this, that's fine. Um, but we will keep going until Sally is done, so we'll have the full list um, in the recording later. Thank you. With the support and approval of the Conan Doyle estate, the author presents a fictional account of Arthur Conan Doyle as a boy, invited to attend the prestigious Baskerville Hall, where he exhibits his uncanny ability to spot inconsistencies and solve puzzles put before him. Quickly making friends with Irene Eagle and Jimmy Moriarty, they support each other as they strive to solve a major mystery at the school and face danger head on. Appealing characters and puzzles will draw in readers. There's a touch of science fiction supernatural in there too. And this might be the first book of a new series. The second book of this series, a sequel to A Bad God's Guide to Being Good, Loki has another month to become worthy of Asgard as determined by Odin. This time someone has stolen Thor's hammer Mjolnir and Loki gets the blame even though he did not do it. Along with that, his only friend Valerie is becoming friends with Georgina, who she met at the stable where she rides. Loki is threatened by this. Loki is determined to discover who stole Thor's hammer, but progress is slow. Only plenty of humor, silliness, and Lokiness. There are line drawings on every page, and it's a worthy continuation of the series. Book three is coming out or just came out. Loki, a bad god's guide to ruling the world. So that's something to look forward to. Loki ruling the world? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> this is a sequel to Roll With It. It takes place in Oklahoma. Ellie has cerebral palsy and uses a wheelchair. Her mother and the gym teacher Hutch get married and head off on their honeymoon at the beginning of the book. Ellie's father, stepmom, and stepbrothers will stay with her during that month. Her best friend Coralie is participating in the Little Miss Boots and Bows pageant and manages to talk Ellie into signing up as well. Other best friend Bert is incredibly organized and has agreed to help them prepare for the pageant. Ellie now has to find a way to keep her promise to Coralie while participating in the pageant on her own terms. The pageant hostess appears to be putting Ellie in her wheelchair front and center to make the pageant look more inclusive. Cor Coralie is somewhat jealous and at one point it looks like their friendship may not survive. 
This is on top of the fact that Ellie's father is unfamiliar with and uncomfortable with his lack of knowledge of Ellie and her ways, what she needs and what she needs when. That's something they have to work out. This is a full color graphic novel. Parachute kids is a term used for children who come to the US while their parents either soon return to or never left their home country. Said in 1981, this family of three children told mostly from Bing Lee or Anne's point of view, she's 10. The oldest is 16, her sister Jesse, who speaks English. Her brother is 14, he's using the name Jason. The parents came with them from Taiwan for a one month vacation in Los Angeles. After the father returns home, the mother stays with them a few weeks longer and then she must return also. So the children are living on their own. They do have some family friends who look in on them from time to time. They have to deal with going to school in a new place, learning English, dealing with bullies, missing their parents, and working together to run the household. That's a lot for kids to do by themselves. The brother is gay and knows his culture is not accepting of it. He is hospitalized after a mostly accidental fall off an embankment. The older sister hits the wall after falling for a scam. And the youngest takes odd jobs around the neighborhood to help provide money for food and other needs after they've lost the money that they had been given. This puts her, pulls her sister out of her funk and she gets going again. Text in the balloons is black on white when they're speaking English and red on yellow when they're speaking Chinese, but it's, it's written in English. The author notes that she and her siblings were parachute kids, but the book is a mixture of her experiences and stories from friends. And this book is the 2024 One Book for Nebraska Kids. Another reason to give it a look. Yes. It's also a full color graphic novel. It is fiction and it's based on a true story. It's set in Indiana in 1975. Four years after Title IX was passed, the girls at the Wilkins Regional High School have a team. They had to try out for it, but this is their first team ever and they have to practice at the elementary school and they have no support from the administration except to say, yes, we can have a team. However, they continue to win and soon begin to advocate for themselves. Unexpected wins begin to bring in some fans and slowly the team begins to feel some respect and support and they end up playing in the, Nash, the, the state championship girls basketball game. Best friends Zenith, Nicholas, Vanessa and Eddie were killed in an accident in the middle school science lab. Not something you want happening at your middle school. They have just heard about the possibility of becoming alive again if they can steal a device from a skilled necromancer. They pulled off heist since becoming ghosts, so they aren't too worried. They should be. This could be the death of them. And what would that look like if they're already dead? What is the, um, they're not sure, but they're gonna try it. Some nonfiction for grades two to five or so. This is a hard story. This is a well-written, but so hard. It's told through the voice of an unseen, te unseen teacher who is struggling to tell the story of American slavery. People who were stolen and sold, hard labor with no wage or compensation, families torn apart in Africa and in America, and how the people kept their pride and self, sense of self holding on to hope. School Library Journal says an excellent and essential first purchase for all collections, whether for curriculum building or classroom sharing, this book is unforgettable. And um, also mentioned that goods for homeschooling families as well. On a completely different note, this is a browser's book. This contains poems inspired by different dinosaurs and their capabilities. It's divided into four chapters. Meet the dinosaurs, eat or be eaten, dinosaur families, and the end. Where is it? It's not for report writing, but for pondering the lives of dinosaurs and the world they inhabited. And there is a timeline included at the back. Delightful introduction with basic information about turtles and tortoises with some specific kinds noted for their special qualities. As you can see on the cover, there's amazing photos and artwork of the various turtle species and their habitats. Readers will find good information and the author's admiration for them. This is a wonderful book. This is Jerry Pinkney's autobiography of how he became an artist, what his interests were as a child and how that developed into his opportunities that he had that made him an artist as an adult. It is illustrated with the sketches that Jerry had intended to make into detailed graphite drawings like we expected from him. These are just the sketches like on the cover there. Um, this is mentioned in the editor's note. The art gives a sense of his life and his passion for drawing. And it's on every page, this art is just through the book. 
And um, it's a wonderful story of becoming who you end up being. There's um, a brief biography of the first black woman cartoonist nationally syndicated in the US. She nice. broke the ground for others to follow, both as a woman and as a black woman. She addressed social issues and the beginnings of the civil rights movement. Examples of her characters are included in the book. And an author's note at the back contains some more details about her life. It is a tribute to a groundbreaking artist and cartoonist. And that's my main list. But I do have a couple of series titles if you want, you want to go ahead and go through those. Sure. Lista. Yeah, go right ahead. Yes. That's uh, five more, I think it is, or six. So a couple beginning readers. This is book four about snail and worm. In the first story, they look at clouds and are sorry they cannot keep them in the shape they are because they kind of love some of those shapes. In the second story, Snail gives Worm a big tree, but Worm cannot take it home. He's going to leave it where it is. In the third story, Snail is hiding in his shell because the world is so big and they are so small. Good friends make good stories. This is another book about Ty and his family. Just as they are packing up to go camping, a thunderstorm hits. Disappointed, they agree that they'll have to plan a camp out for another day. Then Ty has a great idea. They can camp in. They work together to set things up in the living room and have a great time. The art shows the camp in is in their imagination, as it is drawn in more childlike art than the regular drawings. As you can see on the cover, the fire and the, and the um, telescope are more childlike drawings than the rest of the illustration. Early chapter book. This is my weirdtastic school number one. I don't know how many word school book series titles there are because he keeps changing after a few books. In this one, summer is over and now the kids, AJ, Andrea, and the others say goodbye to Mr. Cooper because they are starting fourth grade. Their new teacher, Miss Banks, pulls more pranks than the kids. They never know what might be next. Will they learn not to fall for her pranks or will they reach burnout? Hard to say for sure. A couple of early nonfiction books. These are both Ordinary People Change the World series by Brad Meltzer. And this one is a biography of John Lewis conveying his actions and his philosophy to quote him, I am not afraid to get into good trouble. Mm -hmm. It's also one about Temple Grandin. Following the usual formats of the series, this is a biography conveying her inventions, actions, and philosophy. Last book I'm going to talk about is Fiction for Grades 2 to 4. This is Stink. A family yard sale reveals a box of old comic books about Super Gecko, someone Stink had never heard of. And this hmm. lady wants to buy them, but he's not going to sell them because he wants to read them first. Hmm. He learns about a whole new superhero he'd never heard of before. So again, that's my list now. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Sally. Um, all right. Uh, all time. Here. It's like most people have stuck around for, with us. That's great. Um, no comments or anything came in. Uh, if anybody does have any titles you'd want to share with Sally that you know of, you can uh, type in the question section um, or you can just uh, send her an email. Um, I'm sure she's very happy um, to um, receive any um, good tips good on uh, other books that she could read. She loves to do that. <laughs> that would be great to hear from you about ones I've missed. Yeah, yeah. I was just reading books for the summer reading program and my teen list now. Mm -hmm. I had to stop reading books for the children's list. So we have a pile over there. So you can pick up on it later. Yeah. <laughs> There's always a pile. Yeah. So I, I, I always love doing these these shows of yours at the end of the year. And I mention this every year. I know um, that, that for the holidays coming up, for people who may be buying for children, these are good tips. Good, good. Um, gets, gets, gives me ideas of things to buy for my nieces and nephews. I know, so um, I've got some things I jotted down and I may be you know, getting for them. They know I'm the librarian aunt, so they're always gonna get something book related, whether it's an actual book I pick out for them or a gift card to somewhere where they can go and get their own. Um, I know always the same thing. Great idea for this list, list. yeah. Um, and often the previous ones. All right, so um, I think that will wrap it up for today's show. We got some thank yous coming in. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Yes, Thanksgiving can be tomorrow here. Um, I am going to pull back presenter control to my screen. Waiting for it. There we go. So um, as Sally showed you earlier, um, her handouts, you can just go to our Library Commission website, type handouts in the search here, and you'll get to the handouts page where you can get her full list. Um, the slides 
Um, are the slides, I'll, Sally get her slides to me after this um, and we will get the recording going for that. Um, this is our upcoming shows. As I mentioned, this is her first of the three that she does at the end of the year, Best of Children's Books, Summer Reading Program on December 20th and Best New Teen Reads of 2023 on January 24th. So you can go ahead and register for those if you haven't already. Um, to see her um, list there. And the teen ones, uh, the Dana Fontaine will be joining her from uh, Fremont High School here in Nebraska as well. So there'll be uh, the two, both of them doing the teen reads show. That show might go a little long too because both of us will be talking. Yes, and they all, all of our shows usually do. But as you saw here, we record the whole thing. So if you're unable to sit here with us for the full time, however it goes, when it goes live, you'll have the recording available to you. Um, and because we do have the holiday coming up tomorrow, um, I am going to get this, I usually get the recording up the next day. I'm going to get today's recording up today. So it'll be done and up for anyone to watch. So by the end of the day today, um, the recording will be posted. Um, and everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email directly from me letting you know when it's available and ready. And it will be it will also be pushed out on our various social media and on our mailing list here through the Library Commission. Um, but this is where you are um, access our archive shows underneath our new list list of new shows upcoming shows is our archives. Most recent one will be at the top of the page here. There'll be a link to the recording that goes on the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel, a link to the handouts website for all of Sally's handouts, and a link to her slides if you wanted to see um, the slides uh, with the book covers. Uh, while I'm here, I'll show you there is a search feature if you want to search our show archives to see if there's we've done a show on any topic that you may be interested in. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current. And that is because this is our full show archives. And I'm not going to scroll all the way down because this is a giant list, as you can see, as I kind of scoot, scoot down here. Um, and this goes back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009, which means we're in our 15th year. Um, is that right? <laughs> we're up there. Uh, but um, everything has a, a date on it, <clears throat> so when it was originally broadcast. So uh, some of the shows are perfectly fine to watch now. Some stand the test of time, no problem. But many of the shows will become old, outdated. Information and resources may have changed. Uh, links might be broken. Uh, resources and things might no longer exist. Uh, people may work at a different library than when they presented for us 10 years ago or whatever. So just pay attention to that original broadcast date whenever you watch any of our older shows. But we will always keep our um, these shows, as long as we have a place to host them. Uh, this is something librarians do. We maintain things for historical purposes. And as long as we have somewhere to keep all of our show archives, which right now is on the Library Commission's YouTube channel, we will always have them out there available for you. Um, I mentioned social media. We do have a Facebook page that I link to here, but I've got to open over here for you. Um, so if you'd like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. You get reminders about things. This is a reminder to log into today's show, meet the speaker, um, announcing when previous recordings are available. Um, so you all find that on here. Uh, we also use the hashtag Encump Live, a little abbreviation of our show name on Twitter and Instagram. So if you want to keep um, track of us over there, you can do that as well. So that will wrap it up for today's show. I hope you join us next week. It is the last Wednesday of the month, which means it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Yay. Uh, Pretty Sweet Tech is when our technology innovation librarian, Amanda Sweet, comes on the show always the last Wednesday of the month to talk about something techie related. Um, we do tech related shows other times during the month too, potentially, but always the last Friday, last Wednesday will be um, Amanda's Pretty Sweet Tech. And this month, she's going to talk about Internet Librarian Conference. It just happened in October that she attended. It was um, held um, online. And she's going to highlight some of the things that she uh, learned about there for you. So uh, definitely sign up for that show and any of our other future shows we have coming up. Um, I have more in January that I've got to get on the schedule there. So um, look for that. See that getting filled in. Um, and then, of course, sign up for Sally's um, other two sessions coming up. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Sally. And um, we'll see you back here in a couple of weeks for Summer Reading Program 2024. Reading as fast as I can. <laughs> you have plenty of time. Plenty of time. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, Thank thanks for being with us. Um, and um, everyone have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.